Hello, it's Erica from BlacksandPeriodFilms.com and I am here for our first video of the 2019 Black History Month Write It series. And as the intro video that we posted a few days ago said, this time around we're going to be doing books, not images. Something else I've been thinking about is more of a podcast, a more relaxed podcast style type upload. So this is what I'm going to do this month of February. A podcast type discussion of books I've read. So welcome. The first book that I want to highlight for Black History Month 2019 is Paul Marshall's memoir titled Triangular Road. <clears throat> there are so many things that drew me to this book. First of all, admittedly, I was drawn in by the amazing book cover which beautifully captures the essence of Paul Marshall's memoir. For those that are watching the YouTube video, there should be an image of her novel right now. For those that are listening to the podcast over on Sound SoundCloud, um, you can go to the blog, blacksandperiodfilms.com, to see the image of the cover. Um, the vintage image of the intelligent and well-dressed black child, the vintage map showing a portion of West Africa, and finally, the section of writing off to the side all caught my attention when I was looking for books. And I just really wanted to read the book in addition to the title, Triangular Road. So that really caught my attention. But beyond the cover, I was interested in learning more about Paul Marshall, who is a highly acclaimed black female author. Um, but while she's highly acclaimed, she's not very well known. She's not very well known in the general public or within the black community. It's not like she, she's not really a household name, which I found really interesting. She has so many awards, but she's not very well known. Um, she's not a Toni Morrison or Zora Neale Hurston or Maya Angelou. So the beautiful cover paired with it being a black female writer's memoir just grabbed my interest. And I'm very glad I did that because I ended up really enjoying this book. As suggested by the title of the book, her memoir is split into three major parts. And so I'm just going to flip to the table of contents now in the book and read off those title, those, those section names. And there I've known Rivers, the James River. I've known Seas, the Caribbean Sea. And I've known Oceans, the Atlantic. Each section carries us up progressively through her interesting life. We see with each experience how her collection of poems, articles, and novels came to be. It's very interesting. She'll talk about um, a historical event. She'll tie that into her personal life. And then she'll say, and that is how I came up with the idea for this book. Um, for example, <clears throat> one of the books that she is most known for is Brown Girl, Brown Stones. And that she came up with that, as she mentions in her book, from her childhood. The use of historical events and recollection kind of reminds me of Slumdog Millionaire. Um, you know, in that film, they use flashbacks to explain how the main character knew each answer. And that's kind of how she did it in her book. She used events from her life and from history to explain how she came up with her books. It was very interesting, her writing process and her ideas. I think her memoir would best serve as a short series, each episode based on a section of her life. There are so many stories to draw from. We get a taste of her parents' journey from Barbados to America. She is a Bayesian American. And we get an amazing taste of her life in New York in the early 20th century as a Bayesian American. And her parents were immigrants. So we get a taste of her life as a young child of Bayesian immigrants in New York. And we also get an amazing taste of Bayesian American experience in the early, in the early 20th century. We get to see her parents she explained how her parents made their way over to america and that would be amazing to see as a film or in a, in a series we also um get 
the chance to see her amazing travels with the legendary Langston Hughes. She talks about him extensively in her book. Um, the first portion of her book is titled a homage to Mr. Hughes. He was her mentor. He was very giving and her, she talks to, she talks about him for a few pages of the book and she goes into great detail. You can tell that they were close. You can feel the warmth and the love she has for him and how he looked out for her and how she, he supported her throughout her career. And one portion, I just want to read a little section that she read about him, that she wrote about him. Um, whenever it was about his passing away. James Mercer Langston Hughes, Mr. Hughes, for me, he was a loving taskmaster, mentor, teacher, griot, literary sponsor, and treasured elder friend. I miss him. Decades have passed since his death in 1967, and I still miss him. A poem of his speaks to that continuing sense of loss. I loved my friend. He went away from me. There's nothing more to say. The poem ends. Soft as it began, I love my friend. Just beautiful. And you can tell that they're very close. And so I think um, a film about her growing as a writer with his assistance, um, as her mentor and as her elder friend, as she called him, that would be nice to see. Because when there's such a, a mammoth figure like Langston Hughes, you don't really get a lot of times to see the personal side of them, the private side of them. And she talks about that a lot in Triangular Road. It was just very interesting to learn about that side of him. Through this book, I learned about Festic of 77. So the Festic of 77 is also known as the Second World Black and African Festival of Arts and Culture. <laughs> Had to get that right. The first one was held in Dakar in 1966. Um, and the major international festival was held in Lagos, Nigeria. It went on from January 1977 to February 1977. It was a month-long event that celebrated African culture and showcased the world, African music, fine art, literature, drama, dance, and religion. And out of the 16,000 participants, she was one of those participants. And her experience there was just amazing. She talked about the joy, uh, the reconciliation, the exchange of cultures between the various branches of Africa of Africa and its diaspora when she attended this event in 1977, representing America. Um, I think a film about Festech 77 would be awesome. It would be very interesting to get actors from all across the diaspora to come and to be as characters, either real people or composite characters, to show what Fest 677 was all about. Reading her book was a very joyful experience, and learning about Fest added to that. I am really glad that I read Triangular Road. It taught me about author Paul Marshall, um, gave me books to read as, in addition to this. So I'm going to read through her whole all of her books. Because just learning about how she came up with the ideas was very inspiring. So I want to read them. Marshall's memoir would make an amazing short series. Someone should write it. This was day one of the 2019 Black History Month Write It series at blacksandperiodfilms.com. If you want to see other posts, head over to, the, to our Tumblr page. Head over to our Twitter you can check our Facebook out as well as our blog. Um, tomorrow I will be back here with another book. This book that I covered today was nonfiction. So tomorrow I'll be covering a fiction book. So I'll be covering a novel. <clears throat> it's going to be a very interesting month. See you then.